the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13 it says we are the salt of the earth Jesus is teaching now and he began to teach the disciples and he said ye are the salt of the earth he says but if the salt has lost its savour, its saltiness he says wherewith shall it be salted it is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot by men then he says next verse that ye are the light of the world he calls you a city that is set on a hill and by reason of that position it cannot be hidden then he says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick or a lampstand and the bible says it giveth light to how many if you are light you give light to how many not to some it giveth light if you are light indeed your relevance should cut across systems structures religion it says if you are light your light gives illumination to all not some not some that was the true light that lighted every man that was the true light there are false lights they carry a semblance of liberty but it says that was the true light that lighted every man then he leaves us with a final charge verse 16 he says if it is true that you are that light he says let your light the word let is the word permit allow allow that light to so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and as a result glorify your father in heaven we began a discussion talking about the king and his desire I'm not going into all of that but then I did tell you that when you meet the king you are always left with a mandate that you have an obligation to the king remember that your obligation to the king is your loyalty your surrenderedness and then your obedience this is your obligation to the king if at any point in your kingdom adventure you are found wanting in this tripartite requirements you are not faithful your faithfulness is measured by the degree of your loyalty your degree of surrenderedness and then your degree of obedience to the king but when you encounter the king he now leaves you with a mandate that mandate is to become an extension of himself to your world now he calls you light the same thing god is called god is light jesus was called the light of the world and he calls us light and then he says we are salt you see salt has two principal assignments as we know number one is for value to add taste number two is for preservation are we together now it is it's amazing that when you cook it is never too late to add salt there are ingredients that when you don't add at a certain time that meal cannot be the meal you intended is that true but even if you make a mistake and forget salt even at the table there is still an opportunity to add it there and it will not look like you ever made a mistake this is the description of you that means you are never a disadvantage to any system it does not matter the time of arrival provided you show up in that system there must be a space for your relevance he calls you salt that you add value to any system are we together that means the next time you find yourself in your place of work do not think your technical skills are the only thing you are bringing no you will be mistaken a thousand times you are like the ark of god in the house of women Edom. beyond the technical skills you are providing you bring your chiefest value is the presence of god in that corporation are we together now yes so you are the salt of the earth it says but it is your responsibility to keep your saltiness alive so that when you are in the place they can feel your saltiness indeed the power to preserve from decadence and then the power to add taste then he says you are the light of the world he likens you to a city that is set on a hill and by reason of that it cannot be hidden 
that means visibility is every believer's heritage in Christ visibility and influence is not it's not something for a few people are we together now it is God's it is God's desire the king's desire for everyone to be elevated to a position where you can attract the attention of all and sundry that they can learn God through your life and through the excellency of the results that you command you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden then he uses another example he says neither do men light a lamp he never said neither do men put a lamp if the lamp is not lit it doesn't carry any value but once fire comes upon that lamp he says you cannot hide it again but it should be lifted and put in a position where it supplies light to everyone in the room listen to me ladies and gentlemen when the king sends you to represent him his reputation is invested upon you that means when you live a life that does not bear fruit when you live a life that does not produce results it's an indictment on the integrity of the one who sent you he said when i sent you lackest thou anything and they said nothing there are many people who claim to be sent by Jesus I'm not just talking in ministry the average believer from a kingdom dimension believes he's an advocate not just of righteousness but of the kingdom and that is true the Bible says so the Bible calls us ambassadors and in the verse we just read it calls us salt it calls us light in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 it calls us witnesses if it is true that we are light we are salt we are ambassadors we are witnesses then it means that the reputation of the king must have been invested in my life and your life it means we do not just come to Pharaoh and tell him I met the God of the Hebrews and he said let my people go Pharaoh will not let the people go because of that grammar you must bring before you a testament that shows you really met the king are we together this is why results are very powerful they are very powerful because they they give credence to the fact that you were truly sent by God are we together now Paul a man approved of God their corresponding apostolic signs many believers do not know why we don't command the kind of kingdom influence now in leadership and, and thank God for the kind of church that I'm ministering in. You're not ignorant in this area at all. But in leadership, we teach that there are several cadres as far as influence is concerned. And there is a cadre in leadership where the influence that you exert upon people is at the instance of the excellency of the results that you command. Are we together now? yes there are dimensions of the influence that comes because of the title the office that you hold so people do not respect you just because they love you they honor the office that you occupy then there is a dimension of leadership that is because of the excellency of your character are we together now they love you because of a disposition of moral excellence but there is a dimension of influence and leadership that happens at the instance of results that when you are bankrupt of results and you cannot lead that organization to provide provable results nobody is going to be loyal to you this is the kind of world we have found ourselves so it's not enough to say Jesus heals Jesus saves Jesus lifts. he has sent me he said blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord the word blessed means empowered to produce results so when you say I come in the name of the Lord people don't just say amen you are welcome they watch for the signs authenticity when you buy a product that claims it came from a company there are certain seals and certain codes around that product is that true that helps you to distinguish the real from the fake say perhaps it's a toothpaste they will even advertise that when you buy toothpaste from us check you will see something maybe a, a silver label or something like that so when you say you have been sent from God there must be attesting signs and tonight this meeting is not just a miracle service to heal and pray for the sick but it's largely an impartation service that for God's sake something will rest upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ 
shouting and saying I'm from God is not how it is done your results are evangelists hear me there is a sermon only your results can preach you are not the only one who was supposed to be an evangelist your results are also evangelists and there is an audience that only your results can preach to if you are the only one doing the evangelism yourself and your results are silent you are not preaching well both you and your results should preach when Moses came and met Pharaoh he spoke once and the rods continued to speak him. are we together yes this this is the same strategy that the secular world has used to enslave believers they don't talk so loud but my goodness their results are ever speaking from one dimension and one level of success we criticize them but we are still slaves to them are we together yes 